thanks for joining me today. Um, thanks for sharing. Um, uh, this continues the theme of uh, international uh, law. And um, um, we, I, I go even a little bit uh, deeper in a specific field of international law, and this is international uh, trade uh, law, and um, examining uh, the relationship actually between what uh, is happening at the World Health Organization, uh, FCTC, and the World Trade Organization, which is uh, another um, international uh, regime of a specific um, of specific treaties, um, case law, and um, a highly enforceable uh, mechanism. Um, in this um, uh, sense, the question um, which I'm asking in this chapter, which goes into the uh, book which Lukas mentioned, is um, is there any uh, possible discrimination um, between uh, cigarettes and uh, uh, e-vapor products, actually not e-vapor products, but specifically ends in this case, um, uh, under uh, the uh, WTO treaties, if, um, the, the if, if ends have been banned, and we know that there are cases of uh, banning uh, ends in several countries. Um, and that has to be held against the background which um, Lucas already has presented that the World Health Orga Organization's position on ends uh, is uh, by giving some guidance on where that can be classified. But that language, uh, apart from stating these different categories, uh, actually states that they can be completely banned. It doesn't say it should be, but it says it, it, it can. And in the WTO, the discrimination actually is the core. Um, it's, uh, it's core, it's fundamental uh, to its existence, and it's concerned with providing a level playing field between uh, different uh, players and traders on the global market. Um, so um, basically, uh, the concern is, uh, is not uh, allowing um, discrimination uh, by the uh, by the governments with respect to foreign uh, products vis-a-vis uh, -vis their national products and uh, also if uh, there is no national uh, producer in a specific good um, the discrimination should also not uh, be taking place among the importers uh, only meaning that uh, no uh, singular uh, importer should be privileged over others and that all comes to uh, a simplified version of the, the concern of discrimination in the WTO. So the question are, uh, ends then um, uh, like uh, cigarettes in uh, this uh, context and then um, you saw that, that in, at the discrimination uh, provision the word like products is used. So basically the, the, there should be a comparison between ends uh, and the like product and in this case um, I started uh, to see if ends, what is the product this can be compared to, and uh, uh, the, the closest it comes to is uh, probably cigarettes. So this likeness, as you see, it's mentioned specifically in the treaty, and um, um, then the question, the next question is, is this likeness uh, test met? Because if it's met, basically one can claim that uh, you can go to the following steps and uh, you can make a claim on discrimination actually. Um, so the, the, the likeness has four steps in the WTO and I have to stress that um, likeness is a specific legal test in, a test in the WTO. It's not uh, the meaning, we, we don't attribute it a meaning which we may use in day-to-day uh, -day, uh, uh, jargon or, or language. So here likeness specifically means and defined by the um, appellate body the physical properties of the products, their end uses, consumer preferences, and in international classification of the products for custom purposes. So these are the four basic criteria that um, a panel would look at, uh, the judi judicial bodies will look at the WTO to, to determine is one product like another, and then the next step will be if they are like, uh, is uh, one being uh, actually given a less favorable treatment compared to another? If they are like, uh, the supposition is that they should also be treated like. And um, 
But this, all these te tests, they have uh, hundreds and hundreds of pages um, behind explaining how this should be done. But <laughs> in sum, uh, basically, uh, this is a determination if the two products are or could be uh, in a competitive relationship uh, with one another. Uh, competition is ve therefore um, very important uh, in, this, uh, in this sense. I don't know if uh, we will have time to speak about this HS classification because it's a separate topic, but we can take it after. Uh, uh, in the conclusion uh, of this paper, of, th of this research, um, we have looked, uh, um, I, by the way, wrote a paper together with Professor Brian uh, Mercurio, and um, we came to the conclusion that ants may be considered like cigarettes under the WTO legal tests. A ban, uh, too, a ban may be found discriminatory if no science based justification. Um, and health justification uh, may be uh, difficult here given expanding credible evidence on the reduced uh, risk profile compared to cigarettes. So, if the argument of the uh, governments for banning electronic cigarettes is that uh, is, is is based on the, their risk uh, pro profile, then uh, it comes a little bit to, uh, to the question um, why then uh, cigarettes are being uh, trade, traded uh, freely while uh, ends are being banned, given that uh, ends are being already proven to be uh, safer. Um, and where you may think this is a, a, a abstract, uh, abstract talk, but um, this may have several implications and uses. Uh, this, uh, this results certainly um, when uh, drafting positions or advocacy or for policy making, uh, it is an element which needs to be taken into account because uh, World Trade Organization remains still a very solid uh, body of law and highly respectable and enforceable. Uh, raising awareness and uh, disseminating that, I think, is important because it's not a matter which is, uh, you know, highly discussed. And uh, legal, uh, certainly, um, if there should be any legal uh, proceedings, um, that would uh, be an angle to, to be explored as well. And uh, certainly, uh, all the regulation and regulation um, um, making uh, cuisine would have to take this into account as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>